Tommy Armstrong for the captain's blog session. I think this is just really just a informative um, catch up in regarding to the wings and the foils. Um, for anyone that doesn't know Ami Armstrong, he is the founder and CEO of um, Armstrong Foils. If you want to find him, uh, Armstrong. <laughs> I'm not sure about the CEO, but. <laughs> I mean, well, you probably, master you probably of master of chaos. <laughs> is there a is there a, is there a MOA master of chaos? That's not I MOC. Yeah, MOC master of chaos. Sounds good. I should probably be the same. I, I might have need to re, re, reinvent my um, status as well. But um, yeah, Ami has been amazing in regarding to building some of the best poles on the planet. Um, I happen to ride them and have been riding them for a long period of time. I tried a whole lot of different poles in my foil, foil journey, and ended up about three years ago um, riding Armstrong Falls and have never really looked back. They're just so refined, so far, so professionally made that they um, they seem to be a lot better than what's out in the marketplace. And even though you guys came in um, not first to the market, you've, you've definitely hit, hit hit the strides running and um, up there um, as, as, as good as any of the other falls in the market, if not better. And I think... Um, it's amazing that you guys have also been able to work with. I know that you spend a lot of time working with the guys from the America's Cup team um, and you have some of the guys riding their gear and you're constantly just developing um, the new the new age of, of riding the wind, riding the waves, riding the ocean energy in whatever shape, way or form. And that's been really exciting to be part of that journey. And um, I'm really appreciated. I really appreciate all your energy, your focus, your um crazy wizardry that you make um, all the magic happen with these new super advanced foils and keep on pushing the boundaries of what's possible and i guess that's why we have i guess we partnered up and um you've been very supportive and armstrong's been very supportive in helping create the first ever unique foils for the flying mp fish and then also the wings that um i'm taking with so army thank you very much um tell us a little bit about yourself tell us about a little bit about your journey i know you are you're a kite surfer you're a sailor you're a surfer. You've done a little bit of everything. Now you're a wing foiling guru. Um, you design the foils. <laughs> you work with some of the best guys in the industry with the America's Cup um, foiling um, monohulls, which are the most advanced um, sailing crafts on the planet. And um, where do you see it all going from here? And and how have you been involved in the journey? And uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, yeah, we we <laughs> got addicted to foiling initially, I guess, um, with kites. And then obviously we were aware of what, you know, Rush Randall and um, Dave Kalama and Leard Hamilton and those guys were doing in Hawaii um, with basically modified Mike Murphy sit down foils that they were bolting onto boards and, and putting boots on. And that was pretty impressive, but you know, we tried that and mostly just got beatings. And so we, we got right into the kite foiling when that came along and then yeah, I guess timing-wise, just really lucky. We got addicted when we did and, and wanted to make some foils. And then the America's Cup, you know, happened with, with foiling. And, you know, first of all, in San Fran and 13, and then it went onwards. The you know, last couple of iterations of the Cup, obviously, have been on foiling boats. And New Zealand's been really deeply involved in that. And I guess I just got lucky. A lot of people in boat building in New Zealand, I come from a sailing family, you know, someone pretty much everyone knows someone that works on those New Zealand America's Cup teams because they're just there's a lot of people that work in them and like Kiwis love boats I mean you can see this spot here there's this is just an average bay in New Zealand there's I don't know literally probably 150 yachts more than this bay and um yeah so we're, we're surrounded by by smart people that understand water and how it works and so we just really were able to take what we could learn from those guys and turn it into what we thought a great surf kite and wing hydrofoil package would be. And yeah, there's always room for improvement, but it's, it's an awesome journey and teaming up with someone like Chris, obviously Chris is constantly pushing boundaries on every level, um, in which obviously this project is, is on that, on that wavelength. And when Chris came to us wanting to do something, you know, pretty different, First of all, you know, I was like, oh, Chris is crazy. But then I was like, yep, he is crazy and he's going to do it. So, okay, we better get on board, give it a go. And we got really lucky, you know, um, we, we drew up some foils that were going to be adding stability and upwind ability and all sorts of, you know, um, hopefully added functionality to Chris's vessel. And then we managed to build those up at Core, um, who are building, you know, all the F50 yachts that have been racing around the world the last couple of years. So, yeah, they're pretty, they're actually... 
those foils are by far the most advanced foils we've ever made as a company. <laughs> They're on Chris's boat. All custom, so that's pretty cool. We're pretty excited about those things. Yeah, thanks, Omi. Um, you, you guys have done some amazing stuff. And um, yeah, the foils have definitely made a massive, massive difference from a stability perspective. Um, definitely from a directional angle, um, pointability in regarding to how I can uh, sail the craft. Um, and I'm, I'm sure it's, it's, it's going to help in regarding to speed. I, I haven't got to the point that we've got out far enough into trades when the craft light enough to be able to see how much of a difference that makes. But I'll, I'm sure I'll learn pretty quickly within the first three weeks. Um, and I'll give you some feedback on that. But until that point, um, yeah, it just I, I think a, a lot of people don't understand um, foiling and foiling crafts. Um, and I think that it's very important to try and give people perspective on that. Um, most, most yachts and most boats don't fully foil at all. And um, there's sort of, there's, there's directional stability foiling, there's semi-foiling, and then there's fully foiling. And there are literally no yachts in the world besides America's Cup um, yachts that really fully foil at all, especially out in the ocean. Um, mm. And I think a lot of people don't really know and understand that. Um, and a lot I of think, the, even yeah, the, so, so, mm. Go on ahead. that, Chris, I just that point, that's a really key point, like partial foiling that you're talking about. Mm. It's actually massive. And that's where there are mm. probably the biggest gains initially to be made. And your craft, you know, the foils are set up for partial foiling um, mm. and increasing stability and efficiency of the vessel. And that's really where the biggest gains are going to be from all of the foil development into the general yachting and marine industry, because you know, Power Cats, one of the guys that works with us who's worked on the America's Cup campaigns, a boat builder, he's put a lot of foils on 50, 60, 70 foot Power Cats, increasing mm. fuel consumption by up to 30, 40% and improving the ride stability, range, all of that stuff. Mm. So, and that's not lifting the boat all the way out of the water, but you get, mm. you know, a plus or minus, there's different numbers, 10 times the lifting off a foil you do off a planing surface. So as soon as you mm. get up to a bit of speed, it's free energy. Um, just by the fact that you're moving forward and hey that's a no-brainer really yeah and i think that that's where most people i guess don't understand the difference between fully foiling and you know reduced wetted surface foiling which is basically when you reduce your wetted surface so the craft comes a little bit out of the water which means that some of the craft will always still be in the water you're reducing the amount of surface that's in the water which means you're reducing the drag and when you reduce mm. the drag you increase speed and I think that's where a lot of people don't understand the difference. Um, so yes, I'm going to be foiling, uh, wing foiling across the Pacific using a wing and using foils. I won't be out of the water, but I will be having a reduced weighted surface. So it increases speed and creates more stability and more pointability, which is, which is key. Um, and Ami, Ami, tell, tell yeah. us a little bit about those amazing foils that you, you developed that we designed uh, together. I wouldn't say I'd say design together, more left it to you. Well, together. no, I mean, definitely not. They were because your, your input, I mean, in the, any project like that, you know, you, you were very clear on what you wanted to achieve and you understood, yeah. you know, you weren't like, I want to get the boat out of the water. You understood it's partial foiling. We want to increase stability, increase, you know, wind angles and generally improve directional stability and a few other, three other things. And so that was a really clear brief. And we basically made a, a, a J foil with heaps of sweep and, and heaps of dihedral on the tip so that basically, you know, imagine it's kind of this sort of shape. So it's in the water when the boat leans over, the uphill foil comes out mm. and that stops lifting. And so that pushes the boat back to level. Um, and we've, we've got the sweep. That's because in the first <laughs> probably a few hundred miles off the coast, you got weed in that bit of the world. So we're hoping that they shed weed pretty well, which I mean, you've already done that on, on last year's effort down the coast. Yes. I think you probably hopefully had some good experience here i don't know did you get very hooked up in weed i never asked you that no, <laughs> no it wasn't too bad i think also because um you know they they still sit about you know um almost two feet below the surface um we didn't have a problem with that and i, I think the edges the tips were quite were pretty refined and sharp so i've i've actually um i've shaved them off a little bit so they're a little bit rounder so they don't catch as much um but they've been super super efficient and I think a lot of people don't understand the, the, the massive amount of stability difference it makes. And mm. when you're on a craft like mine, which is so unstable when you're standing, <laughs> I think people have no idea how unstable it is. When you add those foils onto <laughs> it, it makes such a significant difference. It's like a, 
like game changing. That's why I'm laughing because I don't know how you actually paddled it across the Atlantic. But anyway, you did. So obviously it's possible. I don't think it's possible for most people. But anyway, um, <laughs> just as well, you're not most people. But yeah, so the foils, and that's what they do for any boat really, is if they're set up properly, they add a massive amount of stability. Obviously with the America's Cup boats, they're taking it to the extreme. They've got a canting arm you know, the latest generations anyway, and they set up, you know, they are actually using the foil as stabilizing against the rig, but they're lifting the whole boat out on it and they're canting the arm up and down and trimming flaps and those guys driving those things, hats off actually to making it look easy because it's very far from easy once you get to that level. But for general um, marine use, yeah, partial foiling, and hey, there's all been partial foiling around for actually a long time with, you know, um, wings on America's Cup boats right down to, you know, horizontal elements on outboard motors that effectively can, you can trim tabs, you know, are, are a version of a, 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 a you know, a semi-foiling sort of surface in some way. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, and I'm, you, don't, you don't really get, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people like use the reference of, of the America's Cup boats as like the fully foiling um, yachts, but if you think about it, there's actually, there are no fully foiling yachts that, that sell open ocean because the, the elements out there are so completely vastly different and you've got so much like <laughs> big, big, big wind, um, big weather, there big waves. There are a couple of those like, crazy, really crazy Frenchies, like high drop. There's a couple of crazy Frenchies that have done some, you know, moderate ocean passages like on high drop tear. And then there's those gigantic um trimarans but they're Tries, yeah. yeah they're not thought they do sometimes they're fully foil, but they're but mostly most the yeah they're kind of bouncing on the yeah. water surface so yeah and there's it's, there's lots of development to do and, and it's it's just really lots exciting times it's cool and then are you let it um, tell us a little bit about um that process of making the wings with the core guys in in in, in new zealand because that was quite an interesting process to watch you going through that i know we're constantly going back and forth you showing me the different iterations and up, up, upgrades and checks on how things were going it was really fascinating to watch with this with the 3d molding and and um, them cutting the molds and stuff tell us a little bit about, about, about that process because it was obviously nothing like that's ever really been done before so it was a really unique process before we start going yeah i mean the, the, the foils are the definitely wings. unique the process we use is actually very similar to how they make the f50 foils so we had a box so that the foils can go up and down um, but it was obviously custom made to mount to the impy fish. And then the foils, the J4s that go in that have a vertical component that can go up and down inside the box. And then the foil itself, the J foil. And we made molds for one side, um, basically the deeper side of the foil. And then the other side, then we laid up into that mold um, with the carbon. And then the other side we CNC cut, which is actually, you know, a way that those guys make those J foils because making two sided molds is much more expensive and, and technically complicated for a one off, you know, part. So you spend a bit more money on CNC time, but it's much faster and more efficient to do it that way for that sort of project. So, yeah, that's that's how we did it. And those guys have done that before, which is lucky for us because we got it done. <laughs> and they're, they're awesome. They're awesome. Pieces yeah, they, of carbon. Are. they are. Um, I mean, tell us a little bit about the So, moving on from foils to, to wings, I mean, I, mean, I know that. You guys made made some amazing foils, and you were sort of already at the top end of the foil game, um, and then the wing and then the wing wing foiling came out, and the wings um, started coming out across a lot of different brands, and you guys jumped on board quite late. But you you like with your design technology and with your your knowledge from the kiting side and the windsurfing side, it was quite interesting to see you take that directly across into the wings. And your first version of the wings came out, and they were super successful and very powerful already right from the start um tell me about about that and tell me about the the advancement on the wing side going forward and and then i guess what we've done a little bit like our own iterations for the wing foils that i'm taking across as well yeah so i mean winging generally i mean it's such a great accessible way to get into water sports and it's actually made foiling way more accessible which i think is why it took off and it was a no-brainer as soon as we kind of understood what it was and, and had a decent, you know, crack at it. We were like, this is actually the future of foiling because it's just so much easier for mm. people to get foiling. Windsurfing is still a great sport, but the rigs are kind of heavy and require more technique. Um, kiting, I think, is still a great sport and I still do it. But the lines, you know, mean a lot of space for setting up and the element of danger when you're learning. So winging is just a great sport to get into 
and it, it's mm. kind of everyone's keen on it and it, it makes fully accessible and then for us with chris's project um yeah we've we've tuned some wings and we've got some new new materials that we're really excited about that we're um testing for chris chris is actually our guinea pig he's testing these materials hopefully I'm, I'm the guinea pig for everyone except for this time i'm the guinea fish <laughs> No, yeah. so we're pretty excited. These, these materials are from one of the top sail makers on the planet. It's their, it's their new material, and it's going to be really exciting to see how it how it handles. It's we're, we've done a lot of testing on it already, and it's like I, I wouldn't you know recommend anything else for Chris's project. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Awesome, thanks, Ami. And I know that um, we I think we started uh, our journey with um, me using some of your smaller wings for for foiling some of the big wave stuff in in South Africa for uh, out of dungeons at sunset, um, which I'm still super keen to get back into as soon as I can get this project done. <laughs> Cause I know that the well, we're working on a whole bunch of a new range of foils. Yeah. So as soon as you finish in Hawaii, we might have some prototypes ready. We'll have, you'll probably be due for some R and R. So we probably should meet up. Um, you know, you'll need, like, you'll should probably need a couple of weeks off. <laughs> and then, Maybe just a couple. and then you'll be ready for some sessions. I don't know what your program is after that, but we'll see. Well, the good news is that I've got, uh, I've probably got an invite back for the for the Eddie Akal event. So I'll probably be back in December, January. So um, we can definitely test out some big wave foils um, for for foiling some of the outer reefs and stuff. I'm looking forward to that. What would I be be using now? The the, the new 650s and 850s or the 525s? Or um, what are you thinking? Right what are the now, what are the advancements on that stuff? Yeah, we're at 525 is probably our, our best foil for, for moderate to larger surf. We haven't focused on a, a specific big wave foil. I know you've been hounding me for years, but to be honest, you're off on this project anyway, so <laughs> I got a reprieve. But now we are working on some smaller stuff, and we will have something that I think will be pretty game-changing on that level, um, you know, towards the end of, of the coming summer. Yeah. And I mean, when it comes to that kind of thing, I mean, we, we know that maybe, you know, with the with the newer wings going a lot more higher spec ratio, as in being wider in their in their surface area, um, even though they're thinner, it still gives it a lot more stability from being on top of it. If you're just um, letting go of a rope and you and you're going down a, a you know a 50 plus foot face wave, um, stability definitely helps. So that's good news that they're a little bit more higher spec because I think it'll make them a little bit more stable. Yeah, I think probably. I mean, the higher spec foils they do you know require a bit more driving and so maybe you know we'll for the next version of you know the kind of all-around performance foils and the big wave foils we'll probably go more moderate aspect for us which i guess might be somewhere well we're playing with a lot of things right now it's all prototyping it'll be somewhere between five and a half and nine <laughs> which is a pretty massive range but yeah we're that's about what we're looking at for ratios there and we'll yeah, we've got a whole bunch of protos and we'll hopefully come up with something that everyone likes. Cool. I mean, thanks very much for like the insights, especially in regard to the really unique and weird um, and wonderful world of um, the foils that we and wings we're making for the, the flying MP fish and the Transpac wing project. Thanks very much for all the support from Armstrong's side. And if you've got any wise words of wisdom um, in regard to where foiling's going and how anybody and everybody can get involved in it about the sport and and what's um, fun and fantastic about it that makes it user friendly for everyone? Well, foiling is just so much fun. Winging, you know, makes it really accessible. So there's no reason not to do it. So I would say go to your local dealer, find a decent board and a foil and a wing and just get out there and do it. No excuses. That's it. <laughs> I like that. And if, it was, if they, everybody wants to find you, obviously they can find you on www.armstrongfoils.com. Um, uh, and then yeah. the uh, all the socials will be around that um, Armstrong Foils as well. And yeah, best wishes to Chris Burdish from the Armstrong team. Epic, man. We're looking forward to, to track the adventure. Yes, and I look forward to hopefully seeing you maybe on the other side. So I'll see you on the other side of the cocktail waiting for me in a foil in hand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll try not to have too many cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> Army, thanks very much, buddy. Great to chat and thanks very much. Looking forward to um, getting those Thanks, Chris. Cheers, buddy. Boom. Bye. Awesome. Thanks, Bye. man.